Our next speaker is Oliver. You may have heard him before. Oliver is a new radio program on 12.30 a.m. It runs Saturdays 9 to 10 a.m. You can pick him up over the, over the airways or if you look up XCO, you can find it over broadband. Oliver is going to address us for five minutes. Excuse me. <coughs> Oliver is going to make a five minute ad address on economics and government. Mr. Oliver. Thank you, John. I feel a little bit like uh, Noah when God talked to him about rabbits and he said, Rabbits, Noah, only two. Only two. John said, Five minutes. At eight, I get the hook. Christian Even Economic Perspective came into being three weeks ago on five days' notice. I was very blessed to have a backer who has given me a year's backing to get on the air and tell the truth about our economic perspective, about our economic situation from a Christian perspective. Now, I'm going to tell you something that you already know, but I want to get it out front. Our political parties do not know economic truth. They do not understand the realities. Now, I have taught government at the high school level. I have taught economics at the college level for 30 years. And I can guarantee you that 30 years ago they didn't get it, and they don't get it today. The bottom line is change is needed. Now, I'm going to go through it quickly. I'm going to go through it quickly because I don't want John giving me the hook. But the first thing we need to do is we need to get our money in order and the Federal Reserve. That's right. We yeah. have the responsibility given to Congress, not a private bank. Amen. Not a group of 13 banks. Not a group of people who started an organization in 1913 that has on their own website said, your dollar today is worth five cents of what it was worth in 1913. That's called inflation. That's called financial destruction. Now let me tell you, if we get back to the Constitution, and I taught it in our public schools before the Union ran me out, because I wouldn't join the Union because of my Christian beliefs, I taught the children that this is a republic we say a pledge yeah. of allegiance, we say to the republic, That's right. not the democracy. A republic is a rule of law. Let me say that again. Hear me loudly and clearly. A republic is a rule of law. It is not 535 people in Washington, D.C. It is not 99 representatives in our assembly and 33 senators it is a republic it is a rule of law and we have lost our legal moorings we have people making decisions that are not legal let me go back to three to four days before the inauguration of mr obama and as a christian and a man of god i will respect the position but i will call him mr obama because while he had cases pending before the highest court in this land, he met privately. It's documented, as I used to say when I broadcast basketball, tout it. Eight of the nine justices met in private with Mr. Obama. That is illegal. We that do is. not have a system of rule of law. We have in the bill pending before the United States Senate another 50 billion dollars to give away to banks we have a situation right now where mr ben bernanke i heard it forget my voice when i get excited i go up a couple octaves <laughs> mr bernanke testified before the house and senate and said that three to five percent inflation a year is acceptable I don't even have to take my shoes off to say without compounding the interest in 20 years at 5%, your money's worth half of what it is today. You don't know it, but there's a plan right now in Washington to take your 401k plan and fund them with government bonds. Go 
government bonds that have the potential to be worthless. You look at what's going on in Greece. Their bonds are one step ahead of junk. Why? Because they have deficit spending. You go to my website, economictruth.org, $74 trillion using generally accepted accounting principles that everybody but the government lives by. And that's how much our debt is. We are bankrupt, ladies and gentlemen. You know it. I know it. The problem is that Madison and Washington don't know it. Now, here's the fundamentals. Now, you're going to have to bear with me because I'm a bear spam. But we will rise again. The point is, many years ago, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, when the Packers lost, Coach Lombardi came in on Monday and said, gentlemen, we're going back to the basics, and he held up a football, to which allegedly Max McGee said, slow down, Coach, you're going too fast. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, we need to say to Washington, to Madison, here in Marathon County, slow down, you're going too fast. With the word of God in one hand and the Constitution in the other hand, we're going back to the basics. This is our government. This is God's country. It is not ours to give away to a bunch of people from the People's Republic of China. We've got $1 trillion of our debt owed by China. And when Greece ran into problems, the European community said, we'll take some of your government buildings and airports and we'll use them as collateral. The problem is if we gave them D.C. as collateral, they'd say that's worthless. So I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, in the presence of Almighty God and His Holy Spirit, that it is time for us to go back to the basics of rule of law. It is time for our politicians to become leaders. It is time for our leaders to say we will not show partiality. In the book of James, James, the leader of the church, admonished the Christians not to show partiality. When 49% of our citizens don't pay taxes, when we don't have any idea how many undocumented workers are getting benefits illegally, when we go through and we spend billions of dollars every day that we don't have because we run the printing presses, you want to know why the stock market's going up? It's because bond prices are going down. Why are bond prices low? Because interest rates are low, because the Federal Reserve is printing dollars and buying the government debt because nobody else will. Think about it. What happens when we can't print any more money? What happens when nobody will buy our debt? What happens when our interest rates go up like they are in Greece? Ladies and gentlemen, we are well past the time to take a stand. I dislike the phrase, line in the sand, because with wind, the line is gone. The cement is wet, the line is drawn, and we need to stand up for righteousness and the rule of law. Thank you very much.